Today we are performing an iron test with the latest technology from Ping in the game improvement category. We've got the G430 irons new for 2023. We're gonna compare them to the previous generation, the G425. We've got Cameron here, he's gonna hit all the shots. And we've got TrackMan to provide all of the data. We'll break down the new tech as well. And we'll tell you everything you need to know about both of these irons. Golfers, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel, you give this video a like, and then you tell us in the comments what you think of the new Ping G430 irons. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf, joined by Cameron Fitzer, Master Club Fitter here at the Minnetonka store. And today we've got the new G430 irons from Ping, uh, a new entry into the game improvement category yeah. from Ping. They've had the G425 now for two years out right. there. So the G430 uh, comes in here, some changes definitely made here, mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, I mean, it's Ping. So you're right. gonna get forgiveness and you're gonna get high MOI, but um, what else have you noticed in kind of your initial impressions looking at it? Maybe yep. a, a few shots here or there. Yep. What have you noticed? I, I'd say the, kind of the, the cool thing that they've started to do, similar to what we saw with the drivers, is more so like they, they've got the, the forgiveness aspect yeah. of a lot of their stuff, and now we're chasing a little bit of distance. Yeah. So yeah. something you'll see on these, slightly stronger loft package. Yeah. We're at 29 degrees on the 7-iron instead yeah. of 30 like we were in the yeah. G425. Other than that, uh, from a top line, really not much mm -hmm. different at address, more so on the back of the golf club right. is kind of what you can see where you can see those technology features. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. But that's kind of your, your biggest difference just visually, I'd say. Right, yeah. yeah, I think the, so there's a couple things to talk about here, the pure flex. Right. Uh, so there's flex zones on the face uh, designed to you know, provide the consistency, you know, and let's say you don't hit the center of the face. Definitely. Maintain the ball speed, make sure right. you're not totally losing a ton of performance right. uh, for the golfers that are, I mean, you're gonna fit golfers into this club that don't hit the center of the face every time. Definitely. So you have to make sure that the performance stays up. Uh, and then uh, the other thing too, the Hydro Pro finish, right. uh, I think they've used that finish in a lot of other clubs, wedges yep. in particular as yep. well. Consistency on uh, different playing conditions. You know, yep. dewy in the morning, or maybe you're playing in rain. Right. Make sure you have consistency there as well. And right. I think visually too, I, I I do think that top line might be a little thinner. Kind of thinner. Lo it looks yeah. like it anyway, right? I, I think kind of the the cool thing that a lot of manufacturers are doing, and could be part of this too, is they kind of hide that top line a little bit. It's almost like a different color scheme where it kind of hides that back yeah. edge of it a little bit. Almost a case where it right. does look a little thinner. Right. It's it's and, and it might be a trick that they've played right. visually, but that stuff does matter. A lot of players are picky about what they see at address. So, Definitely. Um, but what we've been told is two miles an hour faster on the ball speed right. that you mentioned. So whether that's due to lots, whether that's due to technology, probably a little bit of both, but right. um, I'm thinking we'll see some of that today when you do some testing. Yep. We'll also get your feedback on the feel, maybe the sound, the Definitely. look, all that stuff. But um, uh, Cameron, you ready to hit some shots here? Let's do it, let's send it. Oh, that was smushed. That was a good one. That was smushed. Look at that. Yeah. That was a good too. Oh yeah. Hey, you're flushing it right now. There you go. Let's poke better. that one. Chunked. Oh, it's a good miss. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mushed. A little tug, but a little mushed. All right, well, Cameron, yeah. the testing complete there. We've got eight good shots with each iron up there. Yep. Um, already, just looking at this this data initially, we have some findings. But talk to me about hitting the, the clubs and you know feel, sound, right. uh, how they look. I mean, there's, did anything jump out at you with either one? Yeah, uh, kind of like I said uh, originally, not too much that jumped out at me just at address in terms of like top line or blade yeah. length, uh, too much necessarily. Um, in terms of the feel, I, to be honest, I wouldn't say there's a ton of difference there necessarily either. If anything, I'd say maybe slightly more explosive feel from the 430. Okay. Not necessarily like it 
felt soft or it felt firm necessarily, just felt yeah. like it was definitely jumping off yeah. the face a little bit quicker. Something we've kind of seen in, in numbers yeah. perspective here too, with a little mm -hmm. bit more speed coming off the face, but really just kind of carried over that pretty solid uh, look and feel from that 425 right. model, which was really, really good. Yeah, right. I mean, the, the aesthetics are have been good on these ping irons, right. and um, they do a great job too of kind of including that 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 toe weighting, perimeter weighting, yep. all their elements of forgiveness without necessarily giving it a harsh uh, appearance. Definitely. And uh, then we look at these numbers, and we can kind of see, right? I mean, I say two miles an hour. I, I'd yeah, say we're working pretty good. We're pretty yeah. spot on there. Yeah. With, with pretty close just because your club speed's actually the same identically yeah. both so that gives it kind of a good test uh i guess uh baseline right right ball speed 2.1 miles an hour faster yep. with g430 yep. and as we mentioned we'll, we'll reiterate again that's um one degree stronger yep. in loft 29 right. on the g430 g, uh 30 on the g425 so um that's definitely playing into it right and then the smash factor therefore more efficient yep the one thing here that's interesting we get to the spinner i think right. is where we we think uh you know it's a little bit interesting that they're also able to slightly in this test increase the spin right despite lower loft, which right. is a good thing i would say for sure i think the the one thing that kind of scared me a little bit seeing that ping was going to strengthen their lofts a little bit yeah. from a 425 model that was really great for the player who needed height and needed trajectory we didn't really see a decrease in height or spin which is definitely mm -hmm. something that a lot of players need right so I wouldn't necessarily be scared given someone club like a 430 where we right. could almost just get a little bit more distance out of it, but keep the height and keep the spin up similar to where we were with the 425. Yeah. Right, because you, you did gain a roughly four yards carry in right. total for you. Yep. Um, but I think the other thing too, in terms of you know the, the loft conversation, I think yep. a lot of maybe the uh, gearheads out there are mm -hmm. really into this conversation. They have some thoughts for sure on the lofts right. and the way things are going. But right. uh, I know as fitters, your, your, most, your concern is just getting the right you know, helping the golfer hit the right trajectory or hit yep. the right window. Yep. And it's funny here that the landing angle and the height of your shots nearly really didn't change. Identical, yeah. Uh, We're 47.9, right. 430, and 425 was at 48. <laughs> Peak height, same at 108 on both of them, even with the same plus mm -hmm. and minus at five feet. So yeah, extremely so, consistent in terms of that trajectory window right. it's coming out in. Yeah, I think, so it's funny because you look at the launch angle, launch angle is actually, I mean, you, there is a noticeable difference yep. there. But I think the added spin that is given in the G430. Spin and speed, I think, brought, are kind yeah. of your creators of height right. there for Did sure. bring that launch and that window back up. And that's, I think, the goal of these manufacturers when they, you know, when they strengthen the loss. Right. They're trying to, A, provide distance for sure. Yep. But then, B, they're also adding in that, you know, the weight down low mm -hmm. and, and adding spin to, uh, in a way that keeps that ball up for right. golfers. So I think that's cool. And there's also, obviously, the retro spec option here. Right. Or the power spec option with G430, depending on what... The golfer's needs are absolutely so that's uh I, i'm actually i'm pleasantly surprised i mean yeah. today we're using s300 shafts um but there's a wide variety of uh, offerings as well Definitely. so I, I i'm really impressed with these based on these numbers to see g430 go stronger right and still give you the exact same peak height Definitely. Like basically the same landing angle uh more or less the same spin actually a little bit more yep. and then that that launch angle is still a little bit lower, but in a way that's actually good too for the player that has a little bit of speed. You can kind of yep. control things. So, definitely. So. I, I think just a lot of stuff that's promising here. Definitely a case where I'm kind of itching at the, the bit to get out there and start fitting a right. lot of guys for these. Even guys who have kind of gone into 425s and maybe just looking for slight improvement or slightly mm -hmm. more performance out of it. Right. I think it's going to be a great option. Yeah. Last thing we got to do, we got to look at that dispersion map too. Yeah. We've got eight shots with each one and um, we got to see here and it's, Pretty close to, it's pretty similar, right? right? You have the kind of the oval, pretty consistent distances on both clubs yep. where you're not, I think the concern with a game improvement iron is you get that jumper that just, right. you know, goes 10, 15 yards too far. Right. Um, especially when it goes left, you don't really see that a ton here. Yep. You can have kind of one strangler out there with the, uh, the G430 up mm -hmm. there, but uh, nothing concerning that is off the green or anything like right. that. So yeah, um, pretty good. I mean, really consistent there with uh, G430. I mean, yeah. outside of that one that's left, you really have seven shots that are pretty close to each other. Right. Um, and I think that's got to be a really positive development for someone interested in some new game improvement irons. I would agree 100%. Well, golfers, if you're interested in some new game improvement irons this year, you get some really good performance from G425, or yeah. if you want the newest technology from Ping G430, you can get schedule your fitting at Second Swing. Someone like Cameron will take care of you, help you uh, get the right irons in your bag, shooting better scores, hitting more greens, and playing better on the golf course. Cameron, thanks for joining today, yeah. uh, hitting all the shots and giving your feedback. Like we said, G430, really excited about it this year. Definitely, should be good stuff.